Psalm 55 verse 12. He said, then I could be here. Psalm 55 verse 12. He said, for it is not an enemy who reproaches me. Then I could be here. Nor is it one who hates me. Who has exalted himself against me. Then I could hide from it. Verse 13. It's not if it were so. But it was you. A man my equal. A man my what? Equal. My com companion and my what? Acquaintance. Most times, once you make a wrong choice of a companion and acquaintance, that is the fastest road to destruction. That's the fastest road to destruction. Verse 14. He could recall it. He could think it. We took sweet counsel together and we walked to the house of God. Can I be walking to the house of God with you and take counsel with you? Meanwhile, you are the one that is giving me out. May Father in the heavens today find anyone you are taking sweet counsel with together. You are walking to the house of God with, but that one is a household enemy. I decree, let the anointing of God this morning separate you from such a personality in the name of Jesus Christ. How can you bear it? How can you bear it? It's no one that hates you. It's no one that hates you. It's an insider. It's an equal. It's a companion. It's an acquaintance from the altar. I decree and declare every acquaintance, every companion is the one that knows that contract is coming. You go from the side, go and shut, cut you because he doesn't want you to rise anymore. Madabo, Zagade, Renagan, Degade, Chineke, Uye, This will be a, a 2023 is a year of great revelation. Many of you, your problem is tied to this word you are hearing today. Many of you, your issue is tied on breaking this pattern today. A man's enemy and members of his household, every member of your household that patterned your failure, patterned your destruction, whatever the patterns that they used to locate you. I declare and declare that pattern is broken in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that anointing breaks the yoke. I command this morning anointing to begin to break that yoke. If the powers that are behind it will not let you go, I judge that pattern from the altar and I command that demon to die in the name of Jesus. To die in the name of Jesus. To die in the name of Jesus. And giving seven days warning. Seven days warning. Seven days warning. You know, when is your brother? Will you tell him to die? When is your sister? Will you tell him to die? When is your mother? Will you tell him to die? That is why it's a difficult prayer to pray. The psalmist is saying here of how he was betrayed by his own. It is not an outsider. I could have fought with them, but these are my own brother. We have even walked together to the house of God. In David's life, his own was his wife that mocked his worship. His own was his son Absalom. He wanted to dethrone him and make somebody else to become king. Absalom was willing to undermine his own father. So he died prematurely. Don't try to grab somebody else's ministry. Help me. Help me somebody. Everyone that has been a Judas, Judas hung himself. Everyone that is a betrayer, they often Absalom hang himself. Judas hang himself. Whoever walks in this path will always hang themselves. You know that? Ministry is never taken. Ministry is given. You cannot take what belongs to somebody. Anyone planning to take your life and take over your destiny. From this altar, I judge that power. I judge that personality. Whatever I've not given to you, anybody planning from my back to exchange my destiny, to die, declare and declare, it is not taken. It is given. I judge you with the ultimate judgment that has been set for every Judas. Judas hang himself. And everyone that wants to take my life, take my destiny, and the chain who God has called me to be. I judge you with the ultimate penalty from the altar in Jesus' name. As a saying, it's the household mice that show where the meat is in the house. Don't be like that. Don't be a household mice. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Judges chapter 15 verse 11 to 13. 
The 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cliff of Edom and said to something, do you not know that the Philistines rule over us? What is this you have done to us? Judges chapter 15 from verse 11. 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cliff of the rock of Edom. You know, I just hear the Lord say, somebody's destiny is about to turn around and forever. Do you not know? Thank you, Holy Spirit. I can tell you, these are patterns of prayer. Add fasting to it. Add midnight prayer to this prayer. God will break off this rise and fall. The pattern of that rise and fall. The powers that monitor it. Today it is broken and broken forever in Jesus name. Whether the spirits. Whether they operate from foundation. Whatever it is that keep lying to you. To keep taking bad decisions. And making mistakes in life. Those powers are broken and broken forever in Jesus name. Hear me today. There are thousands of men of Judah. They went down to the cliff of the rock of Eta. And said to Samson. Do you not know the Philistines rule over us? What is this you have done to us? And he said to them, watch closely. 3,000 men of Judah were the ones that went to, they were the ones that went to Samson. As they did to me, so I have done to them. Verse 12. Watch and see who handed him over. But they said to him, we have come down to arrest you. Who came to arrest him? Members of his household. That we may deliver you into the hands of the Philistine. Who came to deliver him? Members of his household. Then Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourself. Because he said to himself, Why should you men of Judah, my own people, kill me? It's okay if you want to hand me over. But for you to kill me is wrong. Verse 13. But why should you be the one that will arrest me? Why should you be the one that hand me over? So they spoke to him saying, no, but we will tie you securely and deliver you onto their hands. You know, many people that are tied here, it is members of the household. They tie you securely, you live in the same bedroom with them. If we want to put it in the food, it's convenient. They want to hide it under the chair, it's convenient. It is convenient for them to tie you securely and to deliver you to the hands of the enemy because they are close to your handbag. They are close to your bed. They are close to your pillow. And they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. That means that they had the ropes. It was new. They bought it. They prepared for it to hand them over. Hey! Many a times, those who bind us or deliver us to our own enemy is called the spirit of wickedness. Don't go and fight with your mother-in-law. It's a spirit. Judas was a house of wickedness. Even Jesus had it. One among the twelve betrayed him. Luke 22 verse 2 to 3. And the chief priests and Christ were looking for a way to put Jesus to death. For they feared the people. Then they sentenced him. But Judas Iscariot was the one that would do what? That would do the work. Hear me. Not every love that is shown to you is real. I said not every love. Someone sang a song. You know somebody can be killing you softly. But publicly they will kiss you. Only to kill you. I said they will kiss you. Only to do what? Kill you. It's called the spirit of betrayer. And that spirit that tries to destroy. If it's not taken out of a church. And does not depart from men. Even the men that it oppresses Will destroy themselves. What do you do to overcome this spirit? Number one. Have to separate them. From their sin. When you understand that these are enemies from within your household, you separate them from their sin. You know, members of your family. It's not easy now. When it's your mother now, who is the head person or brother or sister, try as much as you can to separate them from their sin. After you have heard this message, I'm not sending you to go to your family and then to start fighting your father, mother. Try first to separate them. You have to pray. You have to fast. Try to separate them. Now you understand what they are doing. Try and separate them from their sin. When you understand that these are enemies from within your household, separate them from their sin. People who are usually wicked are people who are insecure and have terrible inferiority complex. Understand why they do what they do. Many of them are failures. 
They are wicked because they are insecure. They are wicked because they have inferiority complex. There are some that are very rich. They have everything but they are still wicked. They are not your enemy. It is the wickedness in them that is your enemy. Separate them. Understand the kind of spirit they have. And try to separate them. Put them where they belong. Number two. Hold on tight to your purpose and calling. Because they've been targeting it. They've been hitting it. But make up your mind today to hold on tight. You know, some of you, when you go to a place of prayer and your prayer begins to affect them, they will make sure they take you out of that place of prayer. Hold on tight to your purpose and calling. Hold on tight to your purpose and what calling. Whatever people do, you have to be clear what and who you are in Christ. God's purpose for you. Hold on to your purpose and your calling. That's what is important. Don't let anybody distract you from your purpose and calling. Number three, do not give place for bitterness in your heart. You know, sometimes when they isolate you and they have hurt you, it's very easy to feel vengeance. What can I tell you? God avenges. Trust me. God what? Vengeance is of God. Let go. Don't worry. He will avenge you. God's vengeance is real. God will avenge you. Don't worry. Let go. Number four. Do not share your plans with them anymore. Even though they are family. Do not share your plans with them. Set boundaries around yourself. They are not worthy to come into your plans. Watch what I'm saying. Don't go and start quarreling and dividing your family yourself. But incidences and cases that is established. Pray to it. Let God give you revelations. May devil not show you your mother's face and call her a witch. This teaching is not supposed to do that. We pray that the Holy Spirit will take over this message and never allow a wicked spirit to be stored in your heart against anybody. Many times, even the people hearing the message themselves are the ones that are guilty. Deal with your own wickedness before you accuse anybody. That's why you have to take time to pray. We're going to generally bind the spirit of witchcraft and forgive people. Okay? If you don't do that, you won't know where the problem is. So do not accost those who have accost you. If there are voices that are trying to control you through mani manipulative voices, ask God to give you victory over it. But many times when you've been badly hurt, you'll be hearing voices and then it's easy to accuse people. So ask God for wisdom before you engage in this battle. Do not enter into the compound of the envious. Do not walk alone with one who is envious. Do not do that. We have to pray now. Are you ready for prayers? Amen, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone here has experienced one challenge or the other. As believers, especially spiritual battles of the enemy. And uh, if you have experienced any of such challenge, I woke up as I'm coming here. I told God, you will settle me today. You are going to settle me as such. Many of these battles are not visible to the physical eyes. And so to overcome them, you have to be free. I don't just uh, come here to teach you something. Most times, I teach from experiences. Uh, I find my battles from my own battles. I'm a victim. So when I'm praying, I'm praying for myself as I call you to pray for yourself. I look unto God for my own deliverance. I'll carry you along. And you also carry your family members around and along. And share it if you are online. Because if you are free and your family member has not heard what you have heard, this message will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. But before then, it will be to take me about, um, about uh, uh, two weeks for it to come on YouTube. But it's on Facebook. Because right now we have about four other series message I've been dealing with. I've done five messages already on breaking of patterns, I think. It should be the sixth message. So we are building it up like a, a playlist. So by the time I'm done, there may be about 10 messages. Like next Tuesday, I'll be dealing with um, breaking the patterns of, from the womb, you know, battles from the womb. That's what I'll be dealing with. So that I discovered that there are patterns that have disturbed destinies. And these are the things God is laying in my heart to enter January with and to bring them up in series. So most times we are looking at problems from the end, but you should look at a problem from the process. If you see the process of a problem and understand it and begin to pray the right kind of prayer and pray it from the system and from the source 
I mean, once it's your own problem is hit, you know, hey, this is what it is. And you pray that prayer, I should break immediately because God has anointed this message to give breakthrough and deliverances to families, to homes, and to lives in the name of Jesus. So if you want to see things work better for you this year, you must engage through prayers and deliverance to claim your victory and to be free. Amen? So you want to see liberty and you want to see God deliver you. Let's take the first prayer point. First prayer point, I will take you from Psalm 91, from verse 9 to 10. You would like to take these scriptures and then use them later. Because every prayer point has a scripture. Prayer for deliverance from household enemy. Psalm 91 from verse 9 to 10. I would like to pause at this time to thank God again. I just want to say, Father, we are grateful today in Jesus' name. We are so thankful that you gave us opportunity to understand the patterns. And in understanding the patterns, what we are here is to understand the patterns of household wickedness. And the way the patterns, the same pattern have been used over and over to trouble people in their families. We are about to get into this prayer and we are asking God that grace be released as we pray. And we are confident that the spirit that are behind this pattern are going to be dealt with today that we can receive our liberty and our deliverances in the name of Jesus Christ. I just still want to thank God again and say, Father, I am so grateful from the depths of my heart. Some of us already, the patterns are breaking if you've, if you've been following this series, but we are digging deeper. Oh, righteous God, we are digging deeper. We are digging deeper. He says from Psalm 91 verse 9, Father, thank you. He said, because you have met the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. Have you made the Lord God Almighty your refuge and your most, the most high, your dwelling place? Verse 10. He said, because you have done so, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling place. This scripture secures your dwelling place. Amen? I said, it secures your dwelling place. Let's go back again. Look at it. Psalm 91 verse 10. Is there somebody here? He said, let's go to verse 9. Look at this scripture for such a time as this. Whether they are biological enemies, sickness, or sin and unseen enemy. Okay, demons, or food, or anything that the enemy wants to use against you. He said, because you have made the Lord, who is your refuge, even the most high God, your dwelling place. Are you there? You have made him what? You are a refuge and you are dwelling place. You see, your refuge is where you run to. Where is your altar? Your altar is the altar of the Most High God. Eh? If your altar is the altar of the Most High God, amen, and you dwell in his secret place. This is the promise. Verse 10 promises what? Verse 10 says, No evil shall befall you. Not even household evil shall befall you. Nor shall any play come near your dwelling place. Amen, somebody. Now begin to thank God for protection. Begin to thank God for his deliverance. If you are serious, you should be on your feet. Begin to thank God for his protection. Begin to thank God for his deliverance. Ask that you please watch over me and deliver me from the wise of the enemy. Keep me safe in the hollow of your hand. Say, God, because I have made you my refuge and I have made the most high God my dwelling place. No harm will overtake me. No disaster will come near my place. Ask that you will watch as that the Lord will watch over you. The Bible tells us that he will deliver you from oppression and he will give you rest. He said, therefore, pray, 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 pray that you find the fulfillment of this word. Say, God, save me from the traps that have been set before me by the enemy. Begin to pray. Say, no evil shall befall me and no plague shall come near my dwelling place. If your dwelling place is where the household enemy is. Your dwelling place is where you live. Because you have made the most high God your refuge. You have decided that the most high God is your dwelling place. Therefore, no evil shall befall me in my household. No evil shall befall me in my workplace. Nor shall any plague come near my household. Come near my car. Come near my business in the name of Jesus. Declare and declare. Declare and declare in the name of Jesus. 
Reka bosha kante kate. Reka pa 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 pa. Reka bosha kante kate. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. No evil shall befall me. Pray that prayer. No evil shall befall me in the name of Jesus. No evil shall befall me. Because I have made the most high God my dwelling place. I decree and declare from the altar today. Anyone that there's an evil set against you. Anyone that there's an evil plot against you. As long as the most high God is your dwelling place. You have made him your refuge. I declare and declare. No evil shall befall me. No evil shall come near my dwelling place. No evil shall come near my husband. No evil shall come near my children. Are there evil that are buried in my household? Are there evil that have been projected around me? I declare and declare. Let this evil expire. I declare and declare. Let this evil expire. 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 Oh God. In the name of Jesus. Save me from the traps. Save me from the traps. Placed around me by the enemies. Psalm 59 verse 1. Psalm 59 verse 1. Save me from the traps. Save me from the traps of the enemy. Psalm 59 verse 1. See, you can't just go home and you're afraid. You can't just be at home and you're wondering what happened here, what happened there. No, 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 no. Deliver me from my enemies, oh my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. See, this was a prayer that David prayed. Why did David have to pray this prayer? David had to pray it because he would look like this. Look at his wife mocking him. He would come home. Look at Anselm. Anselm was against him. He would step out. Saul was there. I mean, all around him. He had enemies all his lifetime. So many people were after him. Even among his mighty men, Joab was not there. So many things were going wrong. He knew that he cannot lie down. See, can I tell you a principle? Love everyone if you are in power. But when it comes to trust, trust God. I say this because you see, you can never be careful. You can only be prayerful. How careful can you be? You can only be what? Prayerful. Because the people that are having the key, entering your kitchen, those that are inside the bedroom, are the people that will be the target. David understand this and say, deliver me from my enemies. Oh my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. He doesn't know who they are. So there's no point suspecting who will rise up. You don't know. Let alone now when things are getting hard. Deliver me from my enemies. Oh my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Defend me. Pray that prayer. People like us have had to ask God to defend us. That's why we are still standing. Deliver me from my enemies. Oh God. Hear me. You can't be doing something that is touching the pit of hell. You can't be doing something that is touching the devil. You cannot be scattering things that is gathering. And you expect him not to try to fight you. But it doesn't matter whether he's rising to fight. The important thing is you have a God that can deliver. Pray that prayer. Deliver me from my enemies. Oh my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from my enemies. Oh my God. Be my fortress against those who are attacking me. Almighty God. Thank you for always fighting my battles for me. Give me the spirit of discernment so that I can recognize those who are against me. Give me wisdom Lord and make me wiser than all my enemies. Oh God give me wisdom that I may be wiser than my enemies. Give me the spirit of discernment so that I can recognize them that are fighting me. The worst thing that can happen to you is when you don't have the anointing to recognize their enemy. Oh God anoint me. Anoint me afresh. The Bible David said he anointed my head with fresh oil and my cup will run it over and my cup will run it over. Anoint me, anoint me, anoint me, anoint me, oh God, that my cup will run it over. Anoint me, oh God, with fresh oil, that my cup will run it over, that my cup will run it over. Oh God, anoint me, deliver me, let my horns be exalted, let my horns be exalted, deliver me from my enemies, oh my God, defend me from those who rise up against me, Lord. For that give me wisdom wisdom that will make me wiser than my enemy give me the spirit of the same man that i'll be able to rise up and be able to overcome oh lord jesus deliver me from my enemies oh my god be my fortress be my fortress be my fortress from those who are attacking me be my fortress Lord, be my fortress. Oh God, be my fortress from those that are attacking me. Oh God, be my fortress. Father, be my fortress. I cry out this morning, Lord. Father, be my fortress 
from those that are attacking me. Oh God, be my fortress. Oh God, be my fortress. Oh God, be my fortress. From those that are attacking me. And then put it together. And I did get a good good Mother, I did a good take a bath. She can't take a day. can't take a day. Recaposha can't take a day. And they get a good shake and day. A certain sister. A certain sister that is here. She told me that she came to her shop and somebody had killed a white pigeon and put the pigeon in a plate and added some things and kept it in front of her shop and killed it. You know, when they start killing an animal, Isaiah 49 verse 26, she's here right now. When she said it, I laughed. Oh God, deliver me. <laughs> deliver me from the wicked and the powers of captivity. Isaiah 49 verse 26, yes. Oh Lord, thank you. God is delivering a woman here right now. Somebody's womb that is closed. Whatever is connected to your womb, God is dealing with it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I'll feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. And they shall be drunk with their own blood. Those who kill that pigeon. They will eat their own flesh. Those who kill that pigeon to collect blood. And to use it for wickedness. I decree from this altar. They shall be drunk with their own blood as with sweet wine. All flesh shall know that I am the Lord and I am the Savior. And we are the Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Anyone that has visited any altar to present any animal and have shed any kind of blood on your behalf from this altar, I declare and declare in the name of our Lord Jesus, let the battle line be drawn today. But I thank you for extending your hand of mercy daily to us. I declare and declare, oh God, today let your light shine. Let your light shine. We claim our freedom from the kingdom of darkness. We renew our strength as we begin to advance in this battle. We declare and declare as we begin to excel. Oh Lord, the Bible said even the prey of the mighty shall be delivered. Lord, you said that them that eat flesh shall eat their own flesh and they shall drink their own blood. Therefore, today in the name of Jesus, is there any man, is there any woman, is there any power, is there any kingdom representing me, representing my family on any altar? I stand from this exalted altar and I command in the name of Jesus, every altar that has been raised on my behalf of my account, we command altar versus altar. We release now, oh, sound from this altar and we declare in the name of Jesus, let the altar of the living God take vengeance on the altar of whatever powers that are on that altar today in Jesus' name. Whoever took that token, whoever carried that sacrifice and took your picture to that altar, the Bible says that the final shall run mad. You know something? As I'm saying this prayer, I saw somebody taking somebody's name and picture to an altar and going there to ask for something to be done. But the Bible said the person that is a diviner shall run mad. I pass the judgment of madness on that person that has continually carried your image, your name, your person, your property or your contact to an altar. I pass the supreme judgment on that diviner today. I decree and declare in Jesus' name. Let the necromancer and the one that is a diviner from the altar, let them catch up with madness according to the word of God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I revert their plan and their program upon their own head. In the name of our Lord Jesus, upon their own head. In the name of our Lord Jesus, any pig they have talk, I command that they take their place in Jesus' name. Anyone that has set a gallon, let them be exchanged like the days of Haman. In the name of Jesus Christ, every token that is on that altar, I command the altar and those who minister on that altar to catch fire. In the name of Jesus, Revelation 21 verse 4. Revelation 21 verse 4. For the Lord shall wipe your tears today. For the Lord shall deliver us from shame. For the Lord shall deliver us from the lawless one. In the name of our Lord Jesus, the Bible says God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. 
There shall be no more sorrow. There shall be no more crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. By this prayer we are breaking the circle. By this prayer we are breaking the pattern. By this prayer we are counseling. The pattern of household wickedness. We decree and declare. Every pattern of household wickedness. That has been responsible. For bringing us into tears. We pray from the altar. We say father wipe away the tears from our eyes. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Every pattern of household wickedness. That has brought death to our water. We declare there shall be no death. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every pattern of household wickedness. That brought sorrow from our businesses. We declare there shall be no sorrow. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Every household wickedness. That has brought crying upon us. We declare there shall be no more crying. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every household pattern of wickedness. That has brought us into pain. We destroy that source of pain. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. From today on this altar. We declare and declare. We are going to for, forget the former things. We command the former things to pass away. Whatever their instrument. Of pain and destruction and disaster. We command their instrument. You are former things. And we command you to pass away. Pass away. Pass away. Pass away. Pass away. Pass away. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pass out wickedness from marine kingdom. We command you. Pass away in the name of Jesus. Pass out wickedness from witches and wizards. We command you. Pass away. Pass away. Pass away. In the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 2 to 3. We are here to address the territorial powers. The territorial powers that walk with this house of wickedness. Deuteronomy chapter 12 from verse 2. And the Bible says, You shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations which you shall dispossess that serve their gods on the high mountains and on the hills and under every tree. Therefore, according to the word of God in the, from verse 3, we shall destroy them completely. All the places on the high mountain, on the hills, under the spreading trees, where the nation you dispossess, worship their gods. We have been given the mandate to destroy their places of worship. And the Bible said, you shall destroy their altars. Break down their sacred altar. Burn down their wooden image. And with fire, you shall cut down their carved images of their gods. And destroy the names of their places. Hey, cry out, my father. My father. My father, my father. father the chariots of Israel. The chariots of Israel. And the horses. The horses. We cry out. Father, send us fire. Holy Ghost, send us fire. My father, my champion. My father, my fighter. My father, my rescuer. Destroy completely all the high mountains, all the hills, all the every spreading tree. Where the nations worship idols. My father, my fighter. Break down their altars. Smash their sacred stones. Smash their sacred stones. Smash their pillars. Burn down their wooden fire. Send those angels on assignment. Let their images be burned by fire. We call down their carved images. Their gods and destroy their names. From all the places where they exist. We release the fire of the Holy Ghost. This is how in the name of Jesus. We come against every territorial power. Every territorial spirit. The Bible said. We shall trample upon serpents and scorpions. And no powers of the enemy shall be able to harm us. Therefore we stand on the authority. And the infallible word of God. And we declare our liberty. From territorial powers and spirits. We surround ourselves daily. With the heart of the enemy. And I Household, 
Buried in our family. Buried in our marriages. Buried in Revival City. Buried in our family houses. Buried in anywhere. Any household enemy. That's raised a pillar. Buried any altar. We burn them down. We burn down their weapons. We burn them by fire. We call them down. We call down their captive image. We call down their gods. And destroy them in the name of Jesus. And destroy their names from their places in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare. We destroy them and their names in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I'm taking the battle to your house. I'm taking the battle to where you live. I'm taking the battle to your family. I'm taking the family household right now to your village. Mother Bosha Gandegabo. Repada Hada Hada. Repada Katekade. Reka Bosha Kantegaba. Reka Bosha Kantegade. Reka Bosha Kantegade. Reka Baba Baba. Reka Baba Baba. Reka Baba Baba. Reka Baba Baba. Maka Teka Tegade. Reka Baba Baba. Maka Teke Teke. Reka Baba Baba. Mata Katekade. I stand on my chapter 7 verse 7. Reka Baba Baba. Reka Baba Baba. We stand on the word of God from the book of Micah chapter 7 verse 7. But as for me, somebody declares for me, I see somebody, you have snakes on your legs, but I set your legs free and I command the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn up those snakes upon your legs right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Micah chapter 7 verse 7 he said, but as for me I watch in hope for the Lord I wait for God my Savior my God shall hear me my God shall hear me therefore God will receive the grace the grace to be kept from household wickedness stretch out your hand oh God we declare no household power shall be able to stand against us and to succeed in Jesus name 